Good day, dear students. So for today's discussion, we will be discussing about imagery, diction, and figures of speech. I am your teacher, Prisme. But before we go further with our discussion, I will be orienting you first with the session objectives of our topic. So at the end of the presentation, you are expected to produce short paragraphs using imagery, diction, and figures of speech. Also, you are expected to use it to specific experiences. And lastly, you are expected to write a brief literary descriptions or a short paragraph through making sense of pictures and songs. Again, welcome to our discussion. Firstly, let's learn about what is imagery. So when we talk about imagery, it is a general term covers the use of language to represent objects, actions, feelings, thoughts, ideas, states of mind, and any sensory experiences. So, this means that imagery is a figurative language used to appeal to the senses through vivid descriptive language. And you need also to remember that imagery creates mental pictures in the reader as they read the text. Okay, so I have here an example, okay, an excerpt from Peter Red Redgrove's Lazarus and the Sea Contains Imagery. So, here is the passage. The tide of my death came, whispering like this, soiling my body with its tireless voice. I scented the, the antique moistures when they sharpened. The air of my room made the rough wood of my bed, most dear, standing out like roots in my tall grave. So as you can see, while reading the excerpt, okay, we are creating mental pictures as we read the passage. Okay, so next one is about diction. When we talk about diction, this refers to the selection of words in a literary work. So, I have here an example. Okay, may we read it all together? I prize thy love more than whole mines of gold, or all the riches that is doth hold. Okay, so in our given example, the use of antiquated words such as thy instead of your and doth instead of do gives the poem a formal diction. These antiquated words are considered grand, elevated, and sophisticated language. Okay, so that's all about diction. So, did you get it? I hope so. So, if you have additional example, you may comment down below. Another topic is on figures of speech. Okay, so I know that you are no longer new to this topic. Okay. So, let's just have a recapitulation of it. Okay. 
So, you will learn the following figures of his speech. So, these are the following. We have similes, metaphors, personification, hyperbole, litotes, and metonymy. But first, let us acquaint ourselves on what is the difference between literal and figurative language. Okay. Firstly, let's deal with literal language. Literal means the actual, dictionary meaning of a word, and language that means what it appears to mean. Aside from that, literal also means avoiding exaggeration, metaphor, or embellishment. Literal means conforming to the most obvious meaning of a word phrase, sentence, or story. Okay, so this means that when we talk about literal language, it means exactly what it says word for word. Okay, for example, the U.S. is a large country. Okay, if we take a look into the sentence and ask ourselves, what does it mean? The answer is, it is exactly what it says. So, the U.S. is a large country. That's it. Okay, next example. The weather is beautiful today. So, again, what does it mean? Exactly what it says. So, the weather is beautiful today. That's it. Okay. Literal meaning. Okay. So, aside from that, okay, let's dig into figurative language. So, figurative means language that goes beyond the normal meaning of the words used. It is also based on or making use of figures of speech and metaphorical lastly it is represented by a figure or symbol okay so in other words when we talk about figurative language you need to figure it out because there is a deeper meaning hidden in the words okay let's take a look with the following examples to further understand it Fragrance always stays in the hand that gives the rose. Okay. Does it mean you have a smelly hand? Of course, the answer is no. Then what does the sentence mean? Okay. So it means giving to others is gracious and the good feeling of giving stays with you. So, as simple as you need to bear in mind that in figurative language, you need to read between the lines because not everything is as it appears. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together as I proudly present to you the essential figures of speech. First type of figures of speech is simile when we talk about simile it is a figure of a speech in which a comparison is made between unlike or dissimilar objects using the words like or as so let's take a look with this example friends are like parachutes if they aren't there the first time you need them Chances are, you won't be needing them again. Okay. Mm-hmm. Does this mean that I should jump out of an airplane with my friend strapped to my back? Absolutely not. Okay. So in the sentence, 
friends are being compared to parachutes using the word like okay okay it means friends and parachutes are dissimilar and unlike each other yet we have found a way to relate and compare them so what's the meaning of friends are like parachutes if they aren't there the first time you need them chances are you won't be needing them again so this means parachutes must be there for you the first time you need them or you will fall to your death if they are not there for you the first time you need them you will not need them again you'll be dead so it's like having friends okay friends are the same way if you have a crisis and you need your friend to support you but he or she doesn't come through you don't really need that friend for help again okay so that's the meaning of the sentence okay next one is metaphor when we talk about metaphor it is a figure of speech in which a comparison is drawn between two dissimilar or unlike things without the use of like or as so if simile uses like or as in metaphor okay it is without the use of like or as okay for example a good laugh is sunshine in a house mm-hmm. does this mean that a laugh is actually light from the sun absolutely not a good laugh is being compared to sunshine by saying that it is sunshine okay so a good laugh and sunshine are dissimilar and unlike things being compared to each other so what is the meaning of a good laugh is sunshine in a house this means that sunshine brings joy and happiness to people so laughter does the same thing it also brings joy and happiness to people okay so i hope you are learning so next one is personification when we talk about personification it is a figure of a speech in which animals ideas or objects are given human characteristics or form so let's take a look again with this example the tree bowed and waved to me in the wind uh-huh does this mean a tree actually recognized i was there and acknowledged me by taking a bow and waving to me the answer is absolutely not the tree is being given the human characteristics or actions of waving and bowing so the tree is being personified it now has character again unlike or dissimilar things are being compared and these are the tree and the person so what is the meaning of this this simply draws the picture in our minds that it must be an extremely windy day for the tree's branches to wave and the trunk to bend as if it were bowing so again the tree is being given the human characteristics or actions of waving and bowing so the tree is being personified it now has character okay so that is personification next one we have hyperbole say it again hyperbole hyperbole is a figure of speech in which an exaggeration 
or overstatement is made to illustrate a point. So, let's take a look with this example. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Ten thousand suns light up this room. Interesting, right? Does this mean I could actually eat an entire horse? Or that this room is blindingly bright from actual suns? Mm -hmm. Of course, not. A ridiculous image is being painted in our minds to get the significance and importance of the point across. So, what is the meaning of this? The first sentence, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse, means I am extremely hungry, but in no way could I eat a 400-pound horse, of course. Okay. Whereas, the second statement clearly means that our room is extremely bright, but in no way will we be blinded by it. Understand? Okay, I hope you are following. Okay? So, what is the meaning of this? These statements are both exaggerations to illustrate a point. Okay. So, remember, class, that hyperbole can be funny also. So, here are a few humorous hyperboles. My dog is so ugly. You can tell if he's coming or going. <laughs> Next, your sister is so skinny. She has to run around in the shower to get wet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's proceed to Lytotis. Lytotis, deliberate understatement, especially when expressing a thought by denying or negating its opposite. So let's take a look with this example. It is, it is not very serious. I have this tiny little tumor on the brain. In another example, this is no small problem okay so with the following given sentences does the first mean a brain tumor isn't very serious of course not literally brain tumor is a very serious problem but figuratively the seriousness of the situation in lessened or understated for effect. In the second example, small is the opposite of big and then small is negated, making it seem less important. So, how are we going to do it? Okay, so this is no, as I have mentioned a while back, this is no small problem really means this is a big problem. So, let's go back. Okay, so we have three steps in doing this one. First one. The opposite of big is small. Okay? So you need to negate small by adding not or no. Then restructure your sentence. So this is a big problem becomes this is no small problem. Gets? Okay, so let's dig more on Lytotis. Okay, Lytotis also 
is being used to express modesty or downplay one's accomplishments in order to gain favor or respect. So here are few examples. Okay, if one just bought a Bentley, he might say it it wasn't cheap. Okay, another example is if one is healthy, he might say I'm not unwell. Thank you. <laughs> okay. If one played an outstanding basketball game, he might say, I didn't play poorly. You get the point? Okay, so I hope you get it. Next one is metonymy. Okay, metonymy is a figure of a speech in which a part represents a whole or a whole represents a part. Okay, so let's take a look with this example. Okay, so friends, romance, countrymen, lend me your ears. Okay, so in this example, lend me your ears means to pay attention or to listen. Okay, so I have here more metonymy examples. First one is, she was a girl of 20 summers. Okay, 20 summers means 20 years. Okay. Next one. A fleet of 30 sails docked at the harbor. 30 sails means 30 complete ships. Okay. More metonymy examples. Keep your eye on the ball. Oh, what does it mean? So, I there, okay, means your complete, undivided attention. Keep your eye on the ball. Okay, your attention must be undivided okay next one he's always chasing skirts skirts there means whole women okay lastly john reads po mm. okay po their class means all the works written by Poe, Edgar Allan Poe. Get it? Okay. So, another metonymy example for further understanding. Okay. Fragrance always stays in the hand that gives the rose. Okay. So, the word hand there, class, is the whole person who gives. So, a part, hand, represents a whole, which is person. Did you get it? Okay. So, you have learned the following figures of speech. Let us recall all of them. We have similes, metaphors, personification, hyperbole, litotes, and metonymy. Okay. So... For your activity, okay, it is named Bring Out the Music in Me. Okay, so you need to select one song below which pick your interest. Imagine, it could be Imagine by John Lennon, Paubaya by Moira, In the End by Linkin Park, Titanium by David Guerra Fitzsia. Okay, so here is the directions on how to do it. You need to write about a memory triggered by the music you have chosen. Then, think of where you are when you last heard the music and what it meant for you. So, you need to include any images that come into mind. 
Be sure to make your paragraph interesting by using different figures of speech. As well as diction and imagery also. Okay. So, thank you for listening. I hope you have learned something today. Have you learned something today?